That's a big beak, buddy. Ha, ha, ha. No, it's harmless. That's beautiful. And it's harmless. I mean, it's just very nice food. <laughs> it's cold, but it's ugly, you know. It's not something attractive. Hardy dolls apparently are a grassland riverine bird that is adapted very well to human conditions. Mankind with all of his trappings and modifying nature has actually started creating really interesting habitats for them. For example, a compost heap in, in a backyard is, is a perfect environment for a hardy doll family to come and live. loud one. It wakes me up at 6 in the morning. A racket. A big racket. Can that thing will wake morning? you up. Well, but I don't use a watch in the morning. Because I'm starting waking. I wake up at 4 o'clock. You see, the minute this bed, I hear this bed, I hear that it's 4 o'clock already. Okay, f for me, it's very irritating. Yeah, especially if you're sleeping. Especially if you're sleeping in the morning. <laughs> this yeah. is where the problems with humans arise. They are very early to rise. And you'll often hear them quite early in the morning, sunrise, or just before taking off. I'm not 100% sure why they need to make such a noise. There is one theory which I think can be discounted is that they're scared of heights. Because <laughs> whenever they take off, they make a loud scream. They are essentially what you could call carnivorous, which is insectivorous and then any other little creature that they can catch. But I have heard of vets in the city that have had cats brought in with holes in the head. The tip of the beak is quite robust and strong. Whether it can kill a cat or not, I'd believe it if I saw it. Let's put it that way. of a bird like this is not good it means that somebody's yeah. bewitching you or something mm. yeah if he if he lands on top of your roof then someone is going to die in the family yeah in the zulu culture they say that uh, sometimes it's a bad luck sometimes it's a good luck so when they come on the roof might be somebody might die do you wish you could get rid of them yes I often wish for a pellet gun, oh, yeah. <laughs> then my humanitarian and bird side take over and decide maybe not. Let them live. <laughs> yeah, man. I eat them. Oh, yeah. yeah. What does it taste like? Good, man. Better than chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's oh, nature. No, it's nature. It's nature. We can't. It's a nice thing to <laughs> get rid of them, you know. I've tried to advise various people, um, leave home. Not an option. Um, other people have advised shooting skyrockets through the through the tree at night. So uh, ways of scaring them, you know, they'd all be illegal, basically, and antisocial. Where can she stay? Where there are no places like this. Maybe in heaven. The thing is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe in heaven it, is, it can be a little bit better. Personally, I love the Hardy Dars. I, I don't have a problem with their call. In fact, I have a, a very strong ambition to have um, their call as my ringtone on my phone. Unless there's a 
a, a horrible climatic change where we go into maybe a cycle of drought where people can't water their lawns. They may not be able to feed. So only in, like I say, in very dry times that they might move out. But then they'll move back again. bother me that much. I mean they make a bit of a noise but other than that uh, they're pretty cool. No I never know anybody who doesn't like it. You know I never know anybody who doesn't like it. Yeah. I like them. They're nice. They're everywhere. They're cute and also they remind you of your in Johannesburg all right. <laughs> I would much rather have the hardy dolls. I don't think there's many cities in the world that can boast of such a big noisy bird. strong ambition to have um, their call as my ringtone on my phone.